the greatest problem of our generation is what is called cosmetic revolution. People investing more on how they appear instead of who they truly are. And we see this is really affecting many aspects of our lives. Sometimes we want to look stronger, but we are very weak. Sometimes we want to look very rich, but we are actually very poor. Sometimes we want to be seen to be managing, but we are actually losing it out. Because we fear being condemned, we fear being abandoned, and we fear being rejected. As a result, we have a very empty generation that appears very beautiful. We know very well that one of the uh, things that sell in our world today are cosmetics, and they come every day because people want to look different from the way they truly are. When we bring this sometimes to the level of the family, we find that somebody is a father, but he wants to look in a very different way. Somebody is a mother, even children, but this is something that is slowly but surely taking away integrity from the society. That's why today Jesus is telling each and every one of us, come the way you are and you will experience me the way I am. I am God, I heal. If you are broken, I will heal you. I am God, I restore. If you have empty-handed, I will restore. I am God, I do great things. If you come very weak or disappointed, I will never disappoint you. And that's why today he is condemning religion of show-off. You know the Pharisees were fasting and the scribes, but deep within them, they had serious issues, and Jesus wants them to face those serious issues. Me and you are called upon this morning to face the serious issues of our lives. Yesterday, I was giving a reflection at the Vincentian prayer house, and I shared with them, which I'm also sharing with you, that God does not condemn us for coming to him the way we are. And I was sharing with them that it is better to stand before the Lord broken, wounded, feeling sinful or weak, instead of appearing before men that you are managing, but actually you are losing it out. We pray in a special way this morning that the words of Jesus may get into our lives. And one of the things I loved about the gospel reading today is one word that was repeated three times. God who sees and rewards. When we meet him in secret, he sees and rewards. When we pray in secret, he sees and rewards. When we give alms in secret, he sees and rewards. And even when we fast in secret, in my opinion, this reading is challenging each and every one of us to stop struggling, pleasing people who may not even acknowledge what we are doing and go with God into our inner self and start pleasing God because our God is a God who when pleased he rewards and the best way to please God is to encounter God in a personal way. That's why there is also a social problem in the church of Corinth and that is what St. Paul is addressing today. If you look at the church of Macedonia, they were very good and they were giving generously. But the church in Corinth, those who are rich are giving and bragging. But those who think they are not rich, they are giving but they are complaining. And St. Paul is telling them, please give generously. And he's using very, very real examples to tell them that whatever you give, you actually sow in God. When I was reflecting on this, I remember one thing that I've always believed in, that our life is an echo of our actions. Everything we do in life 
will come and greet us someday. If we do good things, what we do will greet us with a smile. But if we don't do good things, what we do will greet us with crying. And that's why as Christians, we must always be careful of the following three principles. One, the law of multiplication. Life multiplies, especially when we give it to God. Blessings multiply. Those small prayers, coming to church when it's raining, we are actually multiplying something in our lives that we may not even experience. Another thing that we must be very con conversant or very conscious of is the fact that life is dependent on what we deposit. You may want to withdraw more money than what you have deposited, but you will not make it. And so everything we do, we are actually depositing in the accounts of grace. Our prayers, our work, our struggles, our almsgiving. And this is why Jesus wants us, don't do it for people. Do it for God. Because when you do it for God, you are actually investing in the account of grace. And finally, what St. Paul is bringing today, the law of sowing and reaping. The law of sowing and reaping. That our life is a life that sows. But we also reap what we have sown. We pray today, inspired by St. Aloysius Gonzaga, to focus on three important things. One, purity of life. Let us do things with a pure heart, without seeking any reward. Secondly, let us pray for the gift of innocence. The gift of innocence. And thirdly, let us pray for the gift of penance. Aloysius Gonzaga died only when he was 23 years, but he did a lot for God. And actually, he used his condition to praise God. He had the medical condition, but he used that medical condition to serve God. Me and you, in conclusion, are being called upon this morning. Use your condition. Let us use our condition to pray and praise God. God who sees and rewards in secret will not leave us empty. Nyasai maneno gik moti mlingling ok biweo wagi luetu wanono mane momiyo kiku wabedi gijie maduwaro mundu nyisre wabedi gijie malongu enyim nyasai keno maler kawatimugi wakikwatimne dano mondo pakwa towatimne nyasai mundu gwedwa.